Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of AB in the Films. Uh, I got a couple minutes here, so I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, my thoughts on the new movie Krampus, or Krampus, however it's pronounced. Um, but I've only got a few more minutes, so I figured I'm going to film anyway. Uh, I have to uh, let you guys in on a little something with this uh, director, Michael Dougherty, the guy that made this. Um... I had heard he had done this movie called Trick or Treat, which I hadn't seen until this year, and I saw it, and I loved it. So I was really interested in seeing this movie, considering I think this is, what, his second movie that he's directed, I think? Maybe his third? I don't know. Uh, so I went in thinking this was going to be like Trick or Treat. I thought this was going to be a movie where you could watch it so many times, and you would see something different every time you watch it. And... While Krampus is not like Trick or Treat, it is a lot of fun. It is. Uh, okay, so the story is there is this family that is very stressed out uh, about Christmas time because they have relatives coming over that they are not particularly fond of, which is something I think we can all relate to. Uh, personally, uh, for, for me personally, not really. I mean, I like a lot of my relatives. Well, maybe just one or two I can't stand. But aside from that, um, they're really stressed out about uh, their family members coming over because they don't get along. And there's this one kid, uh, of course, we've all seen in the trailers. He's the kid uh, that has written a letter to Santa Claus asking, not necessarily asking for material items, but basically in a way how someone would pray to uh, to, uh, uh, to God or some way, because the letter basically asks, uh, he's basically asking Santa Claus to bring his family together again so Christmas can be what it was when he was younger, when everybody loved each other, and now it's like everybody's just, everyone just hates each other. Uh, and uh, and through, some mis uh, through some misunderstanding, uh, he, uh, he finally realizes there is no hope, and he rips up the letter and throws it out, and that summons... Krampus, which is the shadow of uh, Saint Nick, and I I'm just gonna say right now the 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 scenes that are scary. Well, I sh I shouldn't say scary because there are no scenes in this movie that are scary. At least for me, uh, the scenes that are creepy are really creepy. There there are some sometimes when it's creepy it, it works. There are times in this movie where it tries to be creepy. And it just fails. You're just laughing out loud. At least I was. I was just laughing. Not in a bad way, but in a way like it's so over the top, ridiculous, it's stupid. Like, like there's a scene where the uncle is, I'm not kidding here, getting a shotgun and blowing the heads off of gingerbread men in the kitchen. Like, that that's not creepy. <laughs> Especially when they look very CG, okay? It's not creepy. That is hilarious, okay? So, yeah, I I really did enjoy this. One of my favorite bits in this entire movie, because this sums up what Christmas has become. It really has. The, the opening credit sequence of this movie, that sums it up. The first five minutes of the... No, the first three minutes of this movie, and it's all in slow motion, right there, that's your answer. That's what it's become. Okay, and it's sad, but I was laughing at that. I thought that was pretty funny. I, I, I enjoyed that. I, I did enjoy uh, that opening credit sequence a lot. Because uh, that's another thing I was thinking of. Because I was thinking of, like, Trick or Treat. Like, Trick or Treat opened up with, like, a comic book. You know, the way opening credits were. So I'm like, how is this movie going to open? It can't open with a comic book. Really? Could it? Like, is this, what, is this Michael Dougherty's thing of what he does with his films? And I'm like, no, but it, it's effective. It's effective what, what he does with, uh, with this one. So... He rips the letter, which summons Krampus. But, you know, the funny thing is this. You don't see Krampus a lot in this movie. Like, there are, the, there are the scenes when you see him that are in the trailers, when you see him on the roof, and he's got the, he's got the goat antlers there and everything. And, uh, and he's really creepy, but you never really see him. What, what you see try to attack the family is, uh, is basically uh, toys. Like, if you can, like, he, the best way I can, I can take it is this. If, if, just imagine the toys that Jack Skellington was giving the kids in Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay, imagine that. Imagine those toys, but ten times scarier. Ten times even worse. 
I'm t we're talking about a jack-in-the-box that can dissect you and swallow you whole. Like, I, like, as silly as that sounds, it does work, surprisingly. I mean, I was kind of, uh, intrigued by this. Um, I, uh... And of, and of course the scene where um, where the where the grandmother talks about uh, you know um, uh, the uh, the origin story of Krampus when she actually came came in touch with him uh, you know that kind of reminded me of Trick or Treat a little bit the scenes where um, you know when the girl is telling the school kids about about the uh, about the scene with uh, with um, the bus driver and the kids you know that whole sequence kind of reminded me of that a little bit the way it was told you know because oh now we're gonna see the origin story here this is gonna be interesting. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and without giving away the ending, um, because I think most of the people who do want to see this probably have seen it already, but even if you haven't, without giving away the ending, uh, it was interesting. I, I like it. I, here, here's what I can say. I, I like movies. You know, I, I, I heard this in, in a documentary recently, and, and I couldn't put it any better. I, I couldn't have worded it any better myself. I forget who said it, but someone was talking about uh, the difference between Steven Spielberg and Stanley Kubrick. And and here's the thing. I'm a huge fan of both of those guys. I'm not dissing Spielberg or Kubrick here. I'm not. I'm a huge fan of the both of them. But uh, they said that what Steven Spielberg, why, why Steven was different than Stanley Kubrick is that Spielberg, at the end of almost all of his movies, there was always an ending. He always answered everything. There was never anything that was left unsaid. Kubrick left everything unsaid because he wanted the, the audience to go home and to think about it. Spielberg doesn't really do that. He answers everything right there, and you walk out of the theater going, okay, well, I know everything. But Kubrick wasn't like that. He would end a movie that would make you think about it after, after you were done and watching it. The ending of this movie is one of those endings. I was constantly thinking about it, and I'm like, well... Well, that doesn't really answer anything. I mean, like, do, 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 do they ever... Is everything okay? Like, is, is that the way it's going to be forever and ever? Do they ever go get, get over this or get through this? I, I don't know. But here's what I can say. I, like, I liked it. Because as I was watching this movie, as I got closer and closer towards the end, I'm thinking to myself, how is this movie going to end? I mean, like, this isn't just going to go away... Like, he's coming to get them. He's not, what, was he going to, like, change his mind and walk away and that's it? No. Like, that would be stupid if they did that. And they, and they don't do that. They don't. But I really, I was intrigued by that ending. I really was. So I, I did enjoy this movie a lot. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a Christmas movie, because I was going into this thinking, well, Trick or Treat is something I'm going to start watching every Halloween now. Is this going to be the same thing with Christmas? And... Not really. I mean, like, I, I, I've never been a big fan of the Christmas horror genre. I mean, like, like if you talk about movies like Silent Night, Deadly Night, movies like that, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I'm intrigued by it, but it's not the stuff I watch every year. I usually don't. I watch like whatever ABC Family plays, you know, like like, like movies like that and, and the Christmas specials like that. I don't really watch Christmas horror uh, movies. I'm intrigued by them, but I don't watch them every year. So, uh, final thoughts on this movie. I I thought it was a good time. It, it was a good, it was a good time at the movies. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, go and see it. It's really funny. Uh, it, well, not really funny. I mean, like it, when it's funny, it's funny. <laughs> uh, but uh, I really did enjoy this movie. Yeah, I, I I liked it. Is it one of the year's best? No, not really. But it, for for a for an hour and forty minute movie, it it was enjoyable. Cause cause I was constantly asking myself, how are they going to get out of this? I really was. Uh, so, yeah, Krampus, I thought it was really good. Michael Doherty, he did a good job again. I, uh, he's like an up-and-coming movie director. I really like uh, his movies. You know, he's doing pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's my, those are my thoughts on it, and uh, I will see you guys in the next review. Later.